Every year in Hawaii, thousands of people take to the streets to celebrate an unlikely hero. Spam. At Waikiki's Spam Jam Festival, you'll find Spam curry, Spam corn dogs, candied Spam, and, of course, Spam Musubi. Spam Musubi is a slice of grilled Spam on top of a block of rice, all wrapped with nori. In Hawaii, they're everywhere. At convenience stores, in kids' lunchboxes, and on the menu at restaurants. I always say Spam and rice are like made in heaven <laughs> because rice is just plain and then when you hit the flavor of the Spam, the correlation is really, really good. Spam is so important in Hawaii that some say it's even become a form of currency, leading some retailers to keep Spam behind lock and key in plastic cases. In Hawaii, Spam isn't just a canned meat. It's a big part of history and played a role in the island's economy as an inexpensive source of protein. Spam packs 42 grams of protein into one 12-ounce can that retails for $2.79. But times have changed a lot since Spam was introduced by Hormel Foods in 1937. Changing consumer tastes and competition from new brands has made packaged food products a competitive market. Some legacy brands are feeling the squeeze as consumers pick less processed foods. In this landscape, some packaged food giants have sold off less profitable and usually older brands. Yet Spam stays strong. Hormel reported that Spam had its fifth consecutive year of record sales in fiscal year 2019. Consumers know Spam as a highly processed product. The shelf life of an unopened cam of Spam is disputed. One researcher told us it's indefinite, but Hormel says its shelf life is three years. A can was even found still intact in the deepest place on Earth. So how has Spam kept growing as consumers look for healthier foods? First, let's take a look back at its history. Hormel Foods Corporation started out as a meat processing company in 1891. It was founded in Austin, Minnesota, which is still the company's headquarters, and the site of the Spam Museum. In the 1920s and 30s, there were lots of canned foods available to consumers, but not many canned meats. Meat was usually purchased fresh or cured from the butcher shop. Hormel was at the mercy of fluctuating meat prices and seasonal production that led to big worker layoffs. Company leadership wanted to solve some of those problems, so Hormel started canning meat. Hormel developed the first canned ham in 1926, which was sold by the slice in butcher shops. The products were a success, so successful, in fact, that other companies copied Hormel's canned ham. So the company wanted to develop a product that could be sold directly to consumers, but making a smaller version of the canned ham presented difficulties. They called it the battle of the loose juice, and they spent months working on it. And finally they figured out that not only did they have to have a vacuum in the can, but they also had to mix the pork shoulder and ham in a vacuum. And that's what solved the problem. When it was finally introduced to consumers in 1937, Spam had five ingredients, pork with ham, salt, water, sugar, and sodium nitrite. Hormel's only tweak to the recipe was to add potato starch, which researchers say was to lessen Spam's gelatinous texture. Right away, consumers embraced Spam as a lunch and breakfast meat eaten at home. You know, the first year Spam was out in 1937, there were about 17% of the country was buying it. And by 1940, 70% of urban Americans were buying Spam. While it was popular in the supermarket, Spam really gained prominence on the battlefield. The U.S. military needed a source of protein that didn't require refrigeration and it found Spam. Pork luncheon meat was high on the government's food procurement early on because it was nutritious, filling, affordable. The canned meat distributed to troops wasn't always brand name Spam, but Hormel's product gained a certain reputation during the war. Spam became one of the most used and verbally abused foods of the war. Soldiers called it ham that didn't pass its physical, and the real reason war was hell. American soldiers introduced Spam around the world, delivering it to people in war-torn countries facing food shortages. Hormel shipped up to 15 million cans of meat per week overseas during the war. Many of the countries that ate Spam during World War II still eat Spam. Today, the five biggest markets for Spam are the United States, 
South Korea, Australia, the United Kingdom, and Hong Kong. In some countries, like the Philippines and South Korea, spam quickly became a part of local dishes, like Korean stew buju jjigae and musubi. For generations that lived through the conflicts, spam could be a painful reminder of hard times. Some Japanese Americans were introduced to spam in internment camps. That's where many Japanese Americans first experienced spam. And after the end of the war, many continued eating it. Experts say spam hasn't played a big role in Chinese diets historically, but Hormel saw a big business opportunity there. China is a relatively new market for Hormel, which started operations there in 2017. Spam brand managers say the growing middle class and existing affinity for canned luncheon meat made it a target for business growth. In 2017, Hormel opened a plant in Jiaxing, China, to produce meat products, including spam, primarily for Chinese consumers. And in 2019, Hormel stepped up advertising there to counter fierce competition. We have a lot of competition in the international markets, which is just mind-blowing. International sales of spam have grown over time. Analysts say spam has high growth potential, especially abroad. The international business has slow and steadily continued to grow. Hormel has added flavors like chorizo, tesino, and Portuguese sausage seasoning to appeal to international palates. Today, there are about 16 varieties of spam. Hormel says classic, less sodium, and light are the top three around the world. Part of Spam's appeal with consumers is that it embraces its nostalgia. It just hasn't changed all that much, and its blue and yellow can is very recognizable. We're staying true to the iconography that we have. People want and crave this product. You may have caught a certain CNBC personality eating Spam on live TV straight out of the can. We certainly haven't forgotten it. This sold out in seven hours, Dave. The whole thing, you can't get it. 25 bucks, 25 bucks on eBay. And I've got one. And you know what? It's darn good. And that's because it's, <laughs> what? What? I mean, what are you guys showing a close-up of you eating it. It's just... <laughs> For many Asian Americans, especially in Hawaii, to eat Spam out of the can without cooking it again is like unheard of. Kind of more into like, why do I want a faux burger? How about a delicious tasting thing that is in the shape of a burger? Or David, this by the way, it can be eaten with pens. You don't have to wait for a fork. Man, this is like the food channel over here. CNBC's Jim Cramer tried the limited edition pumpkin spice flavor on air, just as the product was selling out in grocery stores. It resold online for as much as $25 a can a 456% markup. Hormel introduces new flavors of Spam regularly, and it's now up to about 16 varieties. But is Spam really an innovative product? Isn't part of its appeal that it's a little bit nostalgic? Pumpkin Spice Spam really was more of a novelty item, but more than that, it's really about the iconic brand Spam. And the way it connects with consumers after over 80 plus years I mean, it's a great, affordable source of protein. It's very versatile, and it's still on trend with so many consumers today. What Hormel is doing with Spam seems to be working. For the 52 weeks ending November 3rd, 2019, Spam U.S. sales were $220 million. While the company doesn't break out products like Spam every year in its financial results, we do know that fiscal year 2019 was Spam's fifth consecutive year of record-breaking sales. For a product that's over 80 years old, that's pretty impressive. Data from U.S. retail sales backs that up. Research firm IRI estimates that consumers spent over $217 million on spam in calendar year 2018, up 2.8% 2 from 2015. Spam's strong international presence has helped build its domestic growth as people immigrate to the United States. We've seen growth with both of the Asian and Hispanic consumer groups, which are some of the fastest growing consumer groups in the United States. Since Hormel doesn't provide exact annual sales numbers for Spam in its financial results, it's hard to say exactly how much of an impact the canned meat has had on the business's bottom line. But sales from its grocery business, which includes Spam, have been on the rise since 2004, according to FactSet. In 2018, grocery sales made up 26.4% of Hormel's total sales. Analysts say that despite making up a relatively small portion of sales, Spam is a great growth brand for Hormel. Spam has about 90% of the market share for canned meat in the U.S., which means it has little competition. In the domestic business, we estimate that Spam's only about 4%. 
of Hormel's sales. So, you know, not hugely significant, but the great thing about Spam is first of all, it has strong pricing power and part of the brand strength and it has huge international appeal too and i think that provides a great platform for hormel to expand their business internationally consumers are willing to pay a premium price for spam because it has strong brand recognition and there just aren't many other options on the market hormel actually raised the price of spam in the u.s in 2019 but analysts say the hike didn't impact sales volume and while spam is an iconic product it's just one piece of Hormel's business. The company is making an active effort to attract younger consumers by striking a balance between legacy brands and on-trend products. Hormel's management is one of the strongest teams for the packaged food companies. They do an excellent job of supporting their brands, and it's their strong brands actually that we think gives them their competitive edge. Hormel is leaning into other brands to deliver healthier, trendier choices to consumers. The company recently acquired organic meat brand Applegate Farms, and Justin's Nut Butters. And what about the plant-based meat trend? It's one of the biggest fads of 2019, with both consumers and investors. But Hormel didn't have a plant-based meat line of consumer products until September 2019. I mean, everybody knows what's happening with plant-based proteins. That was a trend that we saw coming. Uh, we had actually partnered with another company, and then when the, the IPO market hit, that partner said, you know what, we wanna try and go it alone. Instead of buying, we had to build. Hormel launched Happy Little Plants, which sells plant-based ground meat in 2019. The company also sells blended burgers, which contain both animal and plant-based protein. So what about a meat-free spam? We always continue to evaluate and want to understand, is this a trend that will work? It would have to be the right fit for us in order to venture down that route, um, but we're always constantly looking for, for new flavor varieties and trends that we might want to incorporate with the brand. There's no indication that Hormel will produce a plant-based Spam, but experts don't think the rise of plant-based meat poses a threat to Spam. As these sort of healthier food trends grow, I think there will always be a portion of the population who is trying to do a go against that grain. As more people want to be eat healthy, you have just as many people who says, screw it, I'm going to eat Spam. Despite the meatless meat trend, Spam sales are stronger than ever. Have you noticed more Hawaiian and poke bowl restaurants popping up in your neighborhood? It's not just a coincidence. Hawaiian restaurants are the fastest growing category of restaurant in the US, according to Firefly, a database of restaurant operator profiles. Since spam is an essential part of Hawaiian cuisine, the growing popularity of Hawaiian restaurants is also lifting spam's profile. In Hawaii, spam is 10 times more likely to be on a restaurant menu than it is in any other metro or state. This broader exposure that consumers have today to Hawaiian cuisine is also generating more interest in spam. So maybe you don't necessarily try it on every visit to a Hawaiian restaurant, but you're seeing it on more menus. Despite the growth of Hawaiian restaurants, it's still pretty rare to see spam on a menu. It's on just 0.7% of restaurant menus in the U.S. Compare that to hot dogs, another processed meat. They're on about 15% of menus in the U.S. But the number of menus Spam is on has increased in recent years. Well, it's not on a ton of restaurant menus today. It's on like 1% of menus across the restaurant industry. It's unique in that compared to other processed meat products, it's experiencing growth and it's also projected to continue to grow. Younger consumers are driving Spam's growth, despite Gen Z's preference for organic and natural foods. Compared to millennials a decade ago, 18 to 24 year olds are more likely to shop for foods without additives and are more likely to be vegetarian. But they also prefer meals that are convenient and easy to prepare, just like Spam. Spam had a time in the sun decades ago, and then it maybe skipped a couple generations. And then now today's teenagers also are saying they love it and it's something they want to see and include in their diet. Celebrity chefs and the impact of Instagram on eating out may have something to do with it too. In the past 10 years, Korean American and Filipino American chefs really have come into the spotlight. They've taken what was seen as by Americans as kitschy and made it into something like culinarily legitimate. Whether you love it or hate it, there's no denying that Spam has had a big impact on culture. It's a product that won't disappear. Not even a world war could turn consumers against it. And while experts say some generations fell out of love with Spam, changing demographics and foodie culture has brought it back. So just how far can this 80-year-old brand grow? 
with its vast and diverse group of consumers, Hormel says pretty far.